So over the weekend, there was a battle between good old Irish patriots and perverse communist scumbags Antifa. I say a battle, more a small skirmish. This is a neutral podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, everything I said there was objectively correct. All right. <laughs> um, a computer would have come to the same conclusion. Uh, Sorry for the interruption. I'm Father Calvin Robinson, and you can watch my Common Sense Crusade at 3 p.m. on Thursdays, only on lotuseaters.com, where you can sign up for as little as five pounds per month. Deus fault. But anyway, there was a small skirmish, and uh, Antifa lost, as you can imagine. And something very interesting was discovered as loot after the battle. Uh, loot in the bodies. Yes. <laughs> They, I, kind of, yes. There weren't any fatalities. But um, uh, the, the Antifa guys are kind of like um, NPCs in video game. You punch them and uh, loot comes out. Mm. And uh, I'm not advocating punching anyone, obviously. Did you find gold coins? What do you find? Uh, it's definitely gold. We'll, we'll get to it. Um, before we do, though, uh, let's just turn back the clock about a couple of weeks. Uh, because people have been protesting in Kulok, which is just north of Dublin. That's well, sort of in the Dublin metro area. Um, and thousands of people have been coming out, as you can see, to uh, protest the housing of 500 asylum seekers in the area. Uh, the mixed-use accommodation is going to be, quote, for families, oh yeah, couples, yeah, single adult males, that's more like it, yeah, and single adult females, oh yeah, many of them. I've not seen any of those. No, no, there are very few of those, actually. I wonder uh, what the ratio is. Yeah, the, the ratio is going to be like 90% single adult males. And then technically, those are the things. Uh, and the Irish Department of Integration said that full engagement will take place with public and community leaders. Seems to have gone well, doesn't it? Get thousands of people out. I don't uh, say which community leaders, though, to be fair. Good point. <laughs> the actually, yeah, community yeah, leaders. <laughs> that's a good point. Um, and so the Irish came out and started protesting. And weirdly, they had the same concerns as people have everywhere. Uh, one resident, Eileen Farrelly, presumably a Nazi, uh, said, we have an area that's already high in crime and deprived of resources. We don't want men roaming the streets with nothing to do. This community is full of kids. We have a lot of children here. As a concerned parent and grandmother, I don't want my kids around this area. Why is it always concerned for kids? It's really weird, isn't it? When, like, you know, we took Ukrainian immigrants. No one was like, well, I'm really worried about my kids, you know, because they're all like, oh, it's women and children from Ukraine. Mm. No, no one was in any way concerned about kids. But as soon as you get a load of Middle Eastern and African men Single men being dumped there. I was like, hmm, I'm a bit worried about my kids. Just weird, isn't it? Um, Didn't have this problem when the Belgians came over either. Yeah. The First World War. Yeah. It's almost something like cultural or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's really weird. I can't put my finger on it. But um, <laughs> you just kind of think, yeah, if there's like 500 English refugees get settled in Dublin, they're not going to be like, well, I'm really worried about them. what they're going to do to the children. Of course you're not going to be worried about that. Um, but uh, But anyway. They're going to be uh, doing this. And what I liked about this was the aesthetics of it. You had uh, young lads on horseback uh, leading the That's quite protest, sound, isn't it? Which, yeah, it's very awesome. I like that a lot. Um, what, a, what, a great, uh, what a great image to have. Uh, again, very peaky blinders. Very old world. I just like it. Um, <laughs> but as they point out in this article, the Republic of Ireland appears to be in a position, a period of transition as over a third of the electorate are now expressing, expressing a wish to vote for an anti-immigration party. And the ruling party, which I'm reliably told isn't pronounced Fine Gael, but uh, if you spell it that way, that's how I'm going to pronounce it, uh, also appears to be entering crisis mode. As they had a third of the uh, parliamentary top brass have resigned recently. It's very interesting. Do you know anything more about this? I don't understand Ireland, because the, the politics out there has gone crazy. The, the parties that I used to think were like, like hardcore nationalistic. And, what, like Sinn Féin? Right. I've gone all <laughs> anti-Catholic, anti-Ireland, pro-LGBT, pro-immigration. Yeah. I don't understand. That's weird. Ireland is for everyone, say Sinn Féin. Except for the Irish. Or the British, I guess. <laughs> it's <laughs> so strange. Are, are Sinn Féin still racist against the British? Probably. I think, yeah, everyone is. Well, they can't be racist. They're not allowed to be racist. What the SNP are. It's going to be the Rainbow Island. Labour Party are. No, the SNP are just racist against the English. That's acceptable, though. You know yeah, that. Exactly. But, uh, but anyway, so there was another protest this weekend. And uh, another horse, this time in a carriage. Look at that. The Kulak Cavalry is out today, which is fantastic. 
Uh, but again, good turnout on the uh, the protest. They actually come out on the streets and protest. This is the way to do it, man. Yeah, I mean, stand up. Just to just to be fair, the the English did do this. Uh, then they got beaten up and told they were evil Nazis. Then we stand up again. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this time, Antifa were there. They weren't there the first time. Oh no! This is oh, sensitive, sensitive content. Well, let's see if we can see it. Uh, because there we go. Just some boys. Uh, they don't. There's nothing too much going on. Just push them over, rough them up a little bit. You'll probably have to censor this for YouTube. But um, so who's roughing up who? The 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 local lads are roughing up uh, some communists. Okay. Uh, and one of them, what really is interesting, dropped an unlocked phone. Oh hello. Who's who's this chap? Who's this chap? Should we listen to this now? There's a lot of talking that's going on from the lads, but if you try and listen to the the chap on the video speaking and see what he has to say. Is he here still? No. Oh, no, no. You can't hear it at all. Something's off. Take a picture of him, boys. Yeah. Pull him up. Okay, can so anyone give that guy is giving instruction. One particular thing he says is quote, you need to um, be present but be invisible. Huh? To the people there. You think, okay, that's interesting. Who is this guy? What's his name? Well, it turns out he's a, a News Talk journalist called Paul Connolly from News Talk FM. Here's another video of him preparing uh, the, the flags. They, they've, I don't know, written whatever on these flags. Uh, but here's him in a hotel room with the protesters, or who appear to be the protesters. Uh, sorting out their flags and he's there in videos giving them instruction on how things are uh which is so is this because he's supporting this or is he set is this a false flag is he setting up a fake protest uh well i don't know it seems that he's instructing the antifa guys on what they're supposed to do when they're at the protest it's mental yeah uh news talk for anyone who doesn't know is uh an irish um commercial radio station the only one in ireland that takes on exclusively a uh, news and current affairs based format and they've got about five hundred thousand people a week listening but they're creating the news <laughs> apparently so uh what's interesting as well is that the the guy like this was the the background this the guy's background is of an irish television presenter and radio host are they weaponizing their gay fanboys what i mean i would this is weird. This is what, very you strange. You were them? Very, very weird, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, so it's just very peculiar. I mean, like, how incompetent do you have to be to drop a bloody unlocked phone at this? But what a what a great thing to find. And this is RTE. Um, <laughs> again, what a bizarre, what, bizarre thing. What do you think the end game is there? Well, um, I think... The end game is obviously to portray the normal Irish people who don't want their children molested as being Nazis. Mm. Uh, oh, look, the far right. Oh, look how violent the far right are. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Look at the other. Uh, as you say, create the news. Turn them into uh, figures of hate. You know? so, so send a bunch of gay commies out to get beat up and then cover the news as look at the far right beating up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, again, there's, uh, there's more. Just again, it's that guy. He's actively helping them do all of this, and so you've got uh, people pointing out. Hang on a second, what's going on here? Why are you operating to, like, literally un undertaking some kind of operation mm. to support the government policy in the face of what the public actually want in this? You know, there seems to be a strange sort of hidden hand operating behind it, and it's not so hidden now because these morons dropped an unlocked phone, but this is like the actual hidden hand of a, an, an operation going on. And so you've got this chap from the Irish Freedom Party who uh, did an interview with Paul Connolly, um, but now he says, I see he appears to knowingly cooperate with Antifa agitated, agitators seeking to disrupt anti-mass immigration protests in Kulov. I've written to him inquiring why, uh, but he hasn't had anything back yet. And... Again, it seems like they're actively coordinating. And so, and this is not the only time as well. It's apparently Virgin Media News was seen offering lifts back to Dublin for asylum seekers, uh, which is just really weird. Why is the media in Ireland getting so directly involved? 
in all of this. Uh, and so the Birkin did a bit of an investigation into this. Um, one phone, which seems to belong to one of the mainstream journalists, would appear to show a concerning level of cooperation between various media sources, NGO workers, and prominent anti-fire activists in both Ireland and the UK. So we've got the British hand mm-hmm. puppeteering over it. But I'm sure if you kept investigating, you'd find the American hand above that. Um, but they spoke to some sources, uh, and who they didn't disclose. And they say, our sources explain, uh, and this appears to be corroborated by messages on the phone, that the Antifa group had planned to oppose the protest in the city centre, but ultimately went to Kulak because they thought there would only be women and children there. Easy targets. Yeah. Yeah, if you're going to make anyone feel afraid. But I mean, I guess they didn't expect the, the, the Kulak cavalry to turn out. Um, but the videos of the phone's content uh, are now circulating widely on social media and appear to hold a vast quantity of insider information. Now, it's probably not going to be that much in insider information because, of course, these are just the grunts on the bottom of the hierarchy. They're the only ones. They're just going to be told what they need to be told. Yeah. But, um, but they published a follow-up to this as well. Um, and so... As they say, further connections seem to be made by um, media organizations in Ireland and the UK, including state broadcasters, such as RT and the BBC, uh, hardcore anti activists, left-wing politicians, NGOs, and Islamic clerics and left-wing politicians. Uh, the information posted online appears to indicate that attending leftists and media were accompanied by Muslim and or Asian security from the UK. Very it's strange. stranger and stranger. Yeah. Um, it's also allegedly discovered uh, was the fact that the journalists have been closely colluding with Antifa, buying materials, the flags and disguises. So the journalists bought them, the things that they had while they were there. Um, and there was footage of one high-profile Irish media personality apparently helping to make the banners, which is Paul Connolly. Um, the leak also appears to show how journalists and Antifa's helped strategize on how to confront the protesters, which is the first video for The Sound Is Off. Uh, and Antifa appeared to have been uh, daring immigration, anti-immigration activists to show up to confront them uh, this is a, a very strange occurrence. What do you make of all this, Callum? Okay. So this is kind of just proving what we've all guessed being the case in all of the Anglosphere. Mm. You've got the ground level. Let's take a drug analogy, right? Yep. You've got dealers, buyers. Mm. That's the, the very ground level, people doing the basics. And then this operation, you've got people who live in the local area who have set up their own protest. And at the very ground level, on the Antifa side, you've got your gay fanboys mm. who you radicalized into being communist thugs. Yep. But of course, for the right wing side, that's sort of where it ends. There's, there's no further apparatus orchestrating that. It's completely grassroots. But obviously, for the gay fanboys, that's the lower level, like a drug cartel. And then above them, you've got the people supplying to make sure they've got everything they need. Ideologically motivated journos. Mm. All of the Anglosphere has this problem. And they've got lots of money because it's, well, a cabal at this yeah. point. The entire media is completely captured. And then on top of them, you've got some more people who have got wider interests British Muslims in Ireland, orchestrating this happening. Well, I don't know, just to be clear, I don't know they're orchestrating. uh, No, but but assisting. Assisting is correct, yeah. But why would they have an interest? Why do they have an interest in the UK? Why do they have an interest in France? Who's paying? I mean, let's assume they don't have an interest and they're just paid. Who's paying them? Well, there's a huge problem in in pretty much every part of the Middle East, but now increasingly in Europe, for sure, of organizations that want to massively increase Muslim influence in the world. And, well, they've got plenty of oil money to do it, so why not? Things like the Muslim Brotherhood, for example. I mean, there's a mosque in Gibraltar that cost five million US dollars. I don't know if you w- we went to see. We it. saw it. Yeah, we saw, we didn't go in it, but we saw that it was basically deserted. Nobody goes there. But why was it built? Mm. Purely Strange. saw the expansion of Muslim influence and power. Right. But okay, that's a form of soft power. Mm. So those guys. I mean, I'm not saying that definitely they're from the Muslim Brotherhood or something like this. But if they did have some kind of backers that are helping them orchestrate this, that's the structure. Why do you set up so your gay fanboys are getting beaten up by local ads? Because then you don't have to accept that the reality is the vast majority of the Irish public hate you Mm. and what you're doing to the country. You have to make it seem like there's some kind of opposition that's grassroots that defends the state's position. Because there isn't one. So you've got to make it. Mm. But this is the state position. That's the problem. In times gone by, the intelligence services would have would have clamped down on this foreign interference. But the foreign interference is aiding the state position, and that's why they're not, not doing anything about it. Mm. The people I, at um, the top of that power group have all yeah. got friendships with all in bed with each other. Yeah. I, I used to go to protests in Lewisham against Drag Queen Storytime. There were just a few of us, turning point guys, a few Christians, bus loads of 
counter protests used to turn up with professional signs, mm. you know, to a drag queen event with anti-racism signs and anti for this and that and the other. Like there's a coordination there, all professionally printed and bordered. And you're thinking, where are these? First of all, where are they from? They're not Lewisham residents. Yep. But secondly, who's funding all of this, all these resources? There's there's a system behind it. I don't know what it is, but I'm just saying it's it's very similar to what we're seeing here. No, no, you you you're quite correct on this. I mean, the stand up to racism signs, they're all exactly the same signs in every single protest. And suddenly they just turn up with stacks of these signs. Well, who who paid for all of that? The same human beings are the one turning up as well. Yeah. You remember when Voice of Wales came in and there's mm. this place in Welsh, it's like Clithani or something like this. Bless and you. they decided they would come out and block the entrance to the hotel and it all became a bit of a uh uh well morale boosting ep- episode because what happened is that they literally couldn't get the migrants in so the whole thing disintegrated but a group of people from stand up to racism turned up and when they showed me them i recognized them they're the same oh, really? human beings that go to events in london they're the same human beings who go to every tommy robinson event in like telford mm. right okay so you this guys- is their job the same humans the same 50 human beings turn up to all of these wherever in the country whenever they're activating them i don't do that no. Very, very few people would have even the time to do that. Well, they've you, got jobs. You'd have to be paid. Well, that would be sides, your job. Two like problems, Steve yeah. Ray, you know, it's his job to be annoying outside of Parliament. Yeah. But the, the thing is, how do we not know who's doing this? Yeah. And secondly, why are we not doing this? Well, because we, we, we don't have mysterious funders. That's why. You need money and power to set up that kind of structure. So the Conservatives used to do it. They got in trouble with Battle Boss. I don't know if you remember that. Where they, they had a yeah. national bus. I was one of the campaigners. We used, to get, we used to get on the bus. We'd go somewhere like South Bannet to campaign. Mm-hmm. We'd all get off the bus and campaign. They got in trouble because it was centralized funds that were orchestrating it rather than locally directed campaigns. But it's possible for the right to do this. Mm. So who did they get in trouble with? Uh, the Electoral Commission. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, it would be nice if we had funding to do that because we we could definitely find the activists to do it do we have a right-wing george soros no (laughs) (laughs) trust me we we don't um it would be nice if we did and if there was some right-wing billionaire who was like yeah i would kind of like to do something i'm sure that there are lots of people out there who could do a lot of things but for what purpose because as i mentioned you need power and money so that several layers of control is needed for this to even be worth your time because, of course, you need the media to be completely captured and working with their gay fanboys to set this up. Because the whole point of even doing any of this is to spin a story yeah, that there's strong opposition to the far right who are rising up and we need to clamp down on them. Yeah. Obvious inverse of reality. What's happening is the locals just don't want to be you know, displaced. But you need that counter thing so then you can report on that counter thing that you've just set up. But it's all optics, and we can do this ourselves. So at those Lewisham protests, there'd be a small group of us saying, we don't want grown men dressed scantily clad as women reading to children. And then there'd be a mass of the counter-protesters saying, trans lives matter, stop genociding trans people. So the optics are, well, we're the biggest, and they are on the right side, whereas we know that people all across the country don't want drag queens reading to children. So if we had bigger numbers, if we had those busloads of people, we put it out on Lotus Eaters, we put it out on social media, mm. people see like that it's all about the optics, isn't it? We don't need Channel 4 or BBC. We just don't have the funding to create the infrastructure to make this sort of thing happen, whereas they do. Are you rich? Would you like to win (laughs) this country back? If you appreciated that episode from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content on the site, such as the symposium series, this episode on debating liberalism. If you'd like to find out what else is coming out, you can follow on Twitter at lotuseaters underscore com on Twitter. Thank you and goodbye.